In this video, we're going to take a look at the pathophysiology that leads to diabetic ketoacidosis. To do this, we're going to use some basic cartoons, not because I think they're children, but because they're a useful way to produce some memorable visual images to help us get to grips with this topic. In this video, we're going to talk about insulin, glucose, glucagon, and ketones. Diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA, results from the body having insufficient insulin available to meet its needs. This is nearly always a result of type 1 diabetes. Tim normally manages his type 1 diabetes well. However, he has an important meeting at work today and is feeling distracted. Unfortunately, he left home without remembering to take his insulin. To understand why this is a problem for Tim, we need to have an understanding of the roles insulin performs in the body and what will happen if these roles aren't performed. The glucose we absorb into our blood from our diets is an important source of energy for our cells. But glucose can't pass into a cell without help. We need insulin to interact with the cell membrane first, making it permeable to the glucose, which can then be broken down for energy. As a sufferer of type 1 diabetes, Tim's pancreas can no longer produce insulin. As he forgot to take his insulin this morning, the glucose that he absorbed into his body at breakfast can't be used by his cells. Normally, any excess blood glucose is put into storage for later use. Insulin is once again the hormone that regulates this process. High insulin levels promote the uptake of glucose into the liver, fat and muscle cells. As Tim's blood insulin levels reduce, this process slows and then stops. Glucose is not being used for energy and is not being taken into storage. With nowhere to go, glucose begins to accumulate in Tim's blood. If he was to check his blood sugar now, he would see one of the first symptoms of DKA, an elevated blood glucose reading. When blood glucose levels become low, some of the stored glucose is released. This process is regulated by the hormone glucagon. Like insulin, glucagon is secreted by the pancreas. But rather than promoting the storage of blood glucose, it has the opposite effect. When glucagon interacts with muscle, liver and fat cells, it stimulates them to release some of their stored glucose. The secretion of glucagon is regulated by insulin. High insulin levels inhibit the release of glucagon from the pancreas, while lower insulin levels allow for some glucagon to be secreted into the blood. Tim's blood insulin levels are now very low. As the release of glucagon is now not being inhibited at all, this leads to a lot being secreted from the pancreas. As a result, glucagon is stimulating large quantities of the body's stored glucose supplies to be released into his blood. Tim's blood glucose levels are rising even higher. Tim has arrived at work and is starting to realise that something isn't quite right. He is feeling thirsty, very thirsty in fact, and is needing to constantly drink water. He is also feeling a constant need to urinate. Did he remember to take his insulin this morning? He can't quite remember. He is feeling thirsty as a result of his high blood glucose levels. There is now so much glucose in his blood that it is beginning to have an osmotic effect on his body. By this we mean that the fluid in his cells is being drawn out towards the high concentrations of glucose. This fluid is then leaving the body via the kidneys, leading to Tim to suffer from another symptom of DKA increased urination. As Tim loses fluid, he is of course becoming hypovolemic and thirsty. If he doesn't manage to drink enough water to replace his loss, then he will start to become hypotensive. He will also become tachycardic as his heart beats faster in an attempt to improve his cardiac output. So far, we have ignored a potentially big problem for Tim. Without insulin, the cells of his body are not getting the glucose they need for fuel. If the cells can't make use of the available glucose, then they will need an alternative. Luckily, just such an alternative is available. The high levels of glucagon signal the body's fat cells to release fatty acids into the blood. The fatty acids are then taken into the liver, where they're used to produce ketones. Much like glucose, ketones can be used as a source of fuel for cellular metabolism. Unlike glucose, however, they can enter a cell without the help of insulin. 
ketones are now providing Tim's brain with enough energy to function. However, unfortunately for Tim, ketones have a significant side effect. They are acidic. A healthy individual can easily buffer the acidic effects of small quantities of ketones in the blood. But for Tim, the high levels of glucagon have led to the production of a lot of ketones, more than his body can handle. Tim's work colleagues are starting to become pretty concerned about him. He's shivering and breathing rapidly. When he tries to stand, he feels lightheaded, and he's becoming a little confused. If we were to check his pulse, we would find it has started to feel a little irregular. Tim is suffering the effects of a metabolic acidosis. His peripheral blood vessels are responding to the acidosis by dilating. This will reduce vascular resistance within his body and cause his blood pressure to become even lower. The combination of hypervolemia, resulting from the osmotic effects of high glucose levels in the blood, and the reduced vascular resistance, resulting from the peripheral vasodilation, has the potential to lead to a life threatening degree of hypertension. The peripheral vasodilation is also causing more blood to flow to Tim's skin, where it loses heat. If Tim is not kept warm, he will start to become hyperthermic. A side effect of Tim's high urine output is his body losing electrolytes, including potassium, with the urine. Tim's potassium levels are starting to become dangerously low, and the electrical conduction of his heart is starting to be affected, which is leading to his irregular heart rate. This is all looking pretty bad for Tim. His blood pressure is getting so low that he will soon begin to suffer from shock. He's becoming hyperthermic and he's beginning to suffer from a potentially life-threatening heart dysrhythmia. If these complications don't finish him off, then eventually the acidosis will begin to inhibit the effective functioning of his body's enzymes. This too can be fatal as it will dramatically inhibit the function of the body's cells, including the brain cells. Luckily, his colleagues have called an ambulance, and Tim's off to hospital.